morning everyone and um, welcome to Monday's Thought for the Day. I uh, hope you're well today as we start this week. Um, I've got a bad back so I'm not very mobile right now but uh, hopefully that will um, that will go as the, the week goes on or ease at least. You know I've had some conversations this week with a, a friend who has felt misunderstood and felt criticised uh, and as a result felt rejected and uh, he, he's a person of real faith but he'd been brought to task by a, a fellow Christian about um, a perceived attitude um, the other person feeling that they should be behaving in a different way towards a situation um, the person I sp had spoken to has had a, a, a lifetime of rejection and feels very vulnerable and isolated. Um, now I'm sure that the person who spoke to them didn't mean to make my friend feel the way that he did um, and they felt that they spoke words within the context of Christian love but clearly it, it wasn't received in that way and the result is that it, it's caused some distress and some damage uh, to, to my friend. And this sort of situation indicates the tightrope that we often have to walk uh, and those in pastoral positions face constantly. We have to choose when to say and, and when not to say things and we need to constantly check ourselves and, and seek God's wisdom in, in such matters if we are to avoid causing damage to others. We need real discernment. Sometimes that means putting aside our own feelings, our own agenda, and, and, and sometimes it means acknowledging where our own ego is, is driving the conversation. Um, you know, Jesus always met people where they were. In Romans chapter 15, Paul says, Accept one another then as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. And uh, I sort of ask myself, in, in my friend's situation, was that other person taking into account the reality of my friend's life? Did they know the reality of my friend's life past and present did they really have an understanding of the impact that their words may have at this particular point in time did they have a, a relationship with him to really be able to speak about the tender heartfelt situation that actually contained a lot of fear for my friend did they have that sort of relationship where that, those sorts of things could be explored safely um, without hurt, without damage? And was there a real acceptance of my friend, an acceptance that would lead to that understanding? You know, we, we have choices. We, we can accept people or we can reject people. When we criticise, we, we have to be careful that we don't communicate rejection when we try to change people it can be perceived by them that they're not good enough for us we can't change people by ourselves only them only they and God can do that we can offer loving guidance and acceptance has to come before we might have to have before we might have any real influence in any situation it's about relationship you know we know there's no one among us, us who is perfect we know that not everyone might believe the same things that we might do the person we are speaking to has had different life experiences may have faith may not have faith maybe come to faith at different times is on a different learning curve um, to ourselves and all these things we need to take into account 
not not easy, but we need to take as much as we can into account. When we don't accept people as they are, and particularly people who in themselves feel vulnerable, uh, feel unsure, it can feed the lie that they are no good and have no value. And that's ever more the case when the person has profound and pa painful experience of, of rejection. When someone feels rejected, what happens is they often move towards rejecting those that reject them and what they represent. So if we as Christians communicate rejection, um, either purposely or um, unknowingly, they can assume that God rejects them and they can reject God because of, of that perception. Jesus, isn't he, he's the perfect example of acceptance of others, of always meeting people where they are. He is our advocate, he's not the one who condemns. And, and we must walk in his way, we, we're asked to walk in his way. And people are hurting, aren't they? If, if, if people need to change, I, you know, they usually know what, they usually know that they need to change. I'm aware of things in my life that I need to change. I think we all, we, and we, we strive to change those things. We're not always successful. They may, we, we may not discover we, we may not have discovered a way that we can change. A lifetime of rejection and hurt is, is not easy to turn around, is it? That hurt creates a defensiveness. That defensiveness is for self-protection. And a wrong word from someone at the wrong time creates further barriers. Coming alongside Developing a trusting relationship sometimes take a, takes a long time. Some things can't be rushed and we have to remember that God's timing is perfect timing and God's love is unconditional love. Let's not be in a rush to change others. Acceptance and, and relationship are of the utmost importance. Over time, we meet someone, every time we meet someone, we're faced with choices. We can judge them or we can love them. We can accept them as they are, or we can attempt to change them. We can make them feel respected or despised. We can make them feel valuable or make them feel worthless. Let's choose the way of Jesus, the best way. Amen. And I'll uh, speak to you again on Thursday. And uh, take care, look after yourselves, and God bless as always. Bye-bye.